Hello guys, Will Betumutoko is my name and um, thank you so much uh, for watching this video and I believe you have already subscribed to my YouTube channel. It's called Dr. Wilbert Mutoko. Please, you know by now that uh, I love sharing knowledge and I love empowering others so that they can go and do better for themselves and for the country and probably for the continent as well. Now, if you have not yet watched my other video that I did, which is called Six Reasons Why Agriculture is the Ultimate Business, I suggest that after watching this video, you need to go and watch that video as well. Six Reasons Why Agriculture is the ultimate business let's go into today's video we are looking at agriculture business ideas especially in difficult times we are going through difficult times guys some people who have lost jobs some people will lose their jobs right now particularly in Botswana um, schools have been closed because of the coronavirus and we don't know for how long they've been closed indefinitely and learners are learning from home for most of those schools. If things get as bad as they have happened in China, in Italy, and other countries, we might actually have to, all of us, stay at home. I recorded another video where I was suggesting some of the businesses that you can do online while you are at home during these tough moments. You also need to look at that video. All right. So... It's not all hope lost, okay? After this coronavirus thing, unfortunately, the coronavirus came in at the same time that the recession was about to happen. If you are aware of the cycles of recessions, you will know that um, recessions take place every 8 to 10 years. The last recession that we had was 2008, 2009, 2010. And this is 2020, we have another recession. Unfortunately, it is very bad because of the coronavirus. And it has put a lot of fear in many people. So I just want to say to you, one of the businesses that you can consider doing is agriculture, whether in good times or in bad times. Now, I'll be sharing with you a few things that I think will assist each other. I will not be able to go into detail of each of the businesses, but we can share that in upcoming videos. If I see your comments and I see your questions and I see you sharing and I see you subscribing to the channel, it's going to encourage me to record more videos where we go into detail of each of uh, you know, um, the, the business ideas that can be done in agriculture. So number one thing is that when you go into agriculture, you could actually go in there as a subsistence farm, whereby as a subsistence farmer, you can, you know, uh, create or make food for yourself. The good thing with that is that the food, you know it. You know what you have put in. If you are planting crops, you know you have put manure. You know the kind of chemicals that you have used. Rather than buying from the shops where you don't even know where those things are coming from. I'm not saying those things in the shops are bad. Because after all, mostly they come from the farmers. But what I'm saying is that uh, at the end of the day, when you do the farming yourself, if you rear chicken, if you rear goats, if you rear uh, cattle, you can actually see them and you know what you have done to them. So you are eating organic food. All right. So that's the first thing. Subsistence farming can help you to feed yourself. And it's a good way of starting small so that you learn the ropes in agriculture. Sometimes people want to start massive. You just want to start with a farm that gives you two million puller every month. That gives you, you know, uh, one million dollars every month. It doesn't work like that. Everything starts from somewhere. So subsistence farming is number one. Number two, some people have been saying to me, Dr. Mutoko, we don't have land, especially for the youth. You say, I don't have land. I don't have money. What should I do? Now, I have a suggestion for you. There are some people who have a lot of land. And they are not using it. They will be glad if you were to approach them and say, can I use your land and pay you per month? Or maybe you could actually approach some of them and say to them, look, can I use your land? And I will give you some of the produce from the farm. All right. So basically what we are saying is you can actually advertise 
could advertise on Facebook, you could advertise in the Botswana Advertiser, for those in Botswana, you advertise in the Botswana Advertiser to say you are looking for a farm, all right? Then when the person calls you, you can go ahead and, and talk to them and negotiate with them. I actually know some people that are doing farming. They don't own the land. Let's stop giving excuses, guys. There is always a way. You can use someone's land and then when you are done, let's say you are doing maize. After harvesting, you can give the owner of the land some maize. Maybe you are rearing goats. After harvesting your goats, you can give one or two, you know, to the owner of the land. So that's number two. So we said number one, subsistence. Number two, when you don't have land, there is what to do. Number three, uh, please take advantage of agricultural officers. Agricultural officers are well-trained officers who understand agriculture, guys. Don't go and hustle alone in every country, whether you're in South Africa, you're in Zimbabwe, you are in Botswana, you are in Zambia, wherever you are, there are agricultural officers that are meant to assist you. So it's important for you to look for agricultural offices, officers in your area and talk to them. This is what I want to do. I want to do mushroom farming. Where do I start? What do I do? That's what the government has actually employed them to do. But I, I believe that most agricultural officers are not as utilized as they wish to be. Many of us believe in doing trial and error without asking the experts. Remember, the agricultural officers have experience as well. They've been doing this for years. They have helped quite a lot of people. So they could easily assist you. So that's our number three. Use agricultural officers. Consult with them. Number four, it's important, guys, to empower yourself with knowledge. You need knowledge. The reason why many people fail in business, I believe, is they don't know enough to make it in that business. Even as the Bible says in Hosea chapter 4 verse 6, that my people perish because of lack of knowledge. If you are going to be a successful farmer, you need to take it upon yourself to teach yourself, to empower yourself with knowledge. You need to know enough in your area. So how do you do that? You can read some blogs. You can read the farmers' magazines. You can read some sections in the newspapers for farmers. You can interview farmers who are making it in the area that you are trying to, you know, to, 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 to aim to grow. And also, you can attend some short courses. Please... Don't do farming without knowledge. Otherwise, you will just be wasting your time. And of course, number five is high quality. People who will make it in farming or in any other industry per se, is these are the people who aim to have very high quality. Be unique. Distinguish yourself. Distinguish yourself. Distinguish yourself. Don't just be your usual crop farmer. Don't be your usual sunflower producer. Don't be your usual dog breeder. Be unique. What is your unique selling point? What makes you different from everybody? All right? And of course, number six, treat the community well. The community where you are doing your farming needs to be treated with respect. If you do not res uh, respect your neighbors, then you are going to start some problems. Some people will start stealing from you. Some people will start sabotaging you. When you need labor, they don't come to your farm. I know what I'm talking about. I've seen this in many people's lives, in many farmers' lives. It's important for you to have a good working relationship with people around you. Whether it's fellow farmers or it's just neighbors who are not into farming, it's important for you to create a good rapport. Where possible, donate to the orphans. Donate to the senior citizens. Talk well with others. Let people become your evangelists. Let them go around talking good news about you and your farm. Don't cheat people. Don't do things that cause your name to be in disrepute. All right? And of course, uh, number seven. Number seven, aim to grow your business so that it becomes a commercial farm. 
Yes, you may start as um, you know as a subsistence farmer. You are just starting at a small scale, but you can actually grow your business. Look at it as a business. It must make profit. It's not just for you to be taking things from there and giving to your friends, taking things from there, giving to your family, taking things. No, you need to grow your business to become a commercial entity whereby you can actually sell. And of course, number eight, aim to irrigate, particularly if you're in Botswana. Botswana is a desert. All right. So the temperatures are usually very high. If you are going to rely on the rainfall, uh, you will be very frustrated. So it's important for you to consider doing drip irrigation or whichever way so that you make sure you have enough water. All right. And then, of course, number nine, you could actually start off uh, maybe in terms of water. You may not start off by doing a borehole because a borehole is going to cost you money. You're not going to pay anything less than uh, 50000 you know, to drill a borehole. You are going to pay 50000 Some people will pay seventy. Some people will pay 100000 to install everything. So that's a lot of money. When you are starting, you may not need something like that. You might just need to buy, you know, those Bowsers, that's 5,000 liter or 2,500 liter. You put your water in there. You start off and see how it, it happens. And then you go on. And of course, number 10, um, decide probably this should have been the first one i don't know but um you will let me know what you're thinking so number 10 is you decide which kind of farming you want to do is it dog breeding is it cattle ranging is it small stock if it is small stock which one per se are you thinking of doing gods are you thinking of doing um you know, sheep, if you are doing gods, are you doing go, um, uh, dairy gods or you are doing gods for meat? You need to decide that in advance. If you are doing kettle, are you doing, you know, kettle ranging or are you doing kettle fattening? You need to think about that. If you are doing chicken, are you doing broilers for meat or you are doing uh, layers for eggs? All right, that's very important. If you are doing crops, which crops are in demand? Is it maize? Is it sorghum? All right. Is it green pepper? Is it tomatoes? Is it cabbages? Is it onions? What are you deciding to do? Do you want to do piggery? Obviously, the demand for, for pig meat uh, in Botswana is very high. But let me tell you something. For all these things that I'm mentioning, you must do your research. Do not rely on anybody. Do not even rely completely on what i'm saying in this video i'm just doing this to try and you know uh whet your appetite so that you, you you can go out there and do something for yourself and i'll be very happy to hear your comments i mean you can comment under this video or you can send me an email to wilbertmotoko at gmail.com i'll be very glad to hear from you all right so the ideas that we were sharing today, we said, number one, you can start off as a subsistence farmer. Number two, even if you don't have land, there is what to do. Number three, we said you make use of agricultural officers. Number four, we said you must read, read blogs, read books, read magazines and all those things. Number five, we said make sure it's high quality. Number six, we said treat the community well. Number seven, we said aim to become a commercial farmer to make real money number eight we said irrigation is important number nine and number ten you will remember by yourself let me see if you're a good student please tell me what i said in number nine and number ten in the comment section thank you so much i love you wilbert mutoko signing out Bye bye